well, when I get the uh, responsibility of uh, uh, managing uh, photo coverage in, in, in Middle East, it was, I think, a very timely and right decision by AP to do such a thing. Without knowing all this is going to happen, I arrived in Cairo in 23rd of January to start the photo desk. This was my first day working in AP. And 25th January, after 36 hours, the revolution started in Egypt. So um, I mean, my first memory of the work is that 25th, I came to office, and we, we are told there is demonstration. Our photographers, three fo staff photographers, went to the demonstration. Our photographer, Nasser Nasser, got injured. And Ben Curtis and, uh, and Amir Nabil, they took him to hospital because he was badly injured. And I was, of course, in touch with them. Uh, after a while, when things, I, I, I sent our uh, driver to get their cards, you know, because we, they had photos, but we couldn't. So they bring me the cards. I put these uh, cards in, in lap, my laptop, which was given brand new from AP. And I start to edit. Then I realized I can't transmit these pictures because I don't know the AP softwares. I was just <laughs> arriving. So I had to call to London and say, guys, I'm going to send you by email the pictures. I don't know. Nobody was there to show me. So this is how it really started. Of course, Egypt, then we had Libya. And my, I mean, not my knowing the region, uh, I knew this, this is going to spread all over. We knew, you know, when Libya started, I was really expecting for Syria also to come in there. Well, the difference between the Syrian conflict or uprising is the complexity of the, of the country especially ethnically, you know, because it's, uh, the government is Alawite and majority are Shia, uh, the Sunnis. But Syria is a key country in the Middle East conflict because it's the only country who, is, who has relation with the Arab country in the region who had and has relation with Iran. Syria, as we know, is a bridge between Iran and Hezbollah in Lebanon Hamas uh, in Gaza. So that, I knew that uh, this conflict is much more complex than it. Not only for this, but we had seen Hafez Assad, the father of Bashar Assad, how he was ruling with uh, Iron Fist, how he destroyed, killed 30,000 people. So there is no uh, surprise that his son will do the same thing, or worse even. Well, <laughs> When the first uprising started, of course, we had, no, we had the official photographers in, in, in Damascus, which being official, of course, they, they wouldn't go to cover the demonstration. Then we sent our photographers from Lebanon to Damascus, which, as Santi said, they were kicked out uh, rapidly. And here we are. There is a big story going on. And we have no, we can't get the photographers in because we have no visa. And still that roads, which now we are going from Turkey inside, were, were not open. So after a while, we had this, you know, of course, access through the rebels going to Turkey. And the, the, well, the danger is, exists. When you cover a conflict, it's really dangerous. But being target is a different thing, because we know that inside Syria, the government, the pro-government militia are looking for, photograph for journalists. Uh, so you have two dangers. First, the, you know, the, the normal danger of conflicts. Second, you, you know you are a target. And having, you know, organizing, sending people, I mean, Especially the uh, cross-format team is not an easy thing. You have, you know, it takes time. It takes, uh, that's why having photographers like uh, Narciso and Manu Bravo as freelancers on the ground was very helpful for us. Uh, and also them being f more free, let's say, being able to move around. Uh, 
actually, I, you know, I, myself, I covered for many decades wars all over the world. But this responsibility, you know, having our people on the ground and not being sometimes uh, co being able to communicate with them for days was really bad. I mean, that feeling was much worse than <laughs> being worried for myself because you can't get in touch with them. They, there's no, they can't find the internet for three days. They, and you don't know what is going on. So that was, that was the most difficult part, you know, to have people inside and not being able to communicate as you want for many reasons.